Normally, I speak for very long because I'm an old professor. So, um, Christopher, first, it's a big emotion because the place is full of friends. And usually, I can speak very easily. But more friends in the place, more I'm nervous. Um, yes, it's true. I mean, it doesn't matter. Other places. Um, I would like to thank you. Where is the? I can't see the person who just spoke before me. I wanted to thank him because uh, normally, yeah, he's gone. It, it, shh, don't say so. I just want to thank you because um, you will allow me to pick up on what you said and start a little bit. I have nothing to do with finance. As a matter of fact, it, my personal finances are always a disaster. I have friends who come from the banks, so they try to advise me on a few things, but. Um, I have just one thing that's particular. I'm very, very curious. I studied mathematics, physics. I went into arts, did architecture, built, worked in civil engineering, built bridges. And um, I started fundamental computer science just after that. You take it all, you mix it, and then you have people who come from biology to you, have people who come from physics, and so on. And you spend some time to learn. So this one, that one, the other one. Then when you start touching big and large projects, you hit something that is called finance. So every four or five years, I enter one field to understand. It's OK. I mean, I know mathematics. I can calculate. I can count. And I was trying to understand finance. You want a barrel at $21 tomorrow? I give you a load. Because I'm Lebanese, too. And I have a very good connections everywhere in the world. And I tried to see how trading is going on. On the 7th, a good friend of mine that I met, I'm organizing for him the trade um, of grain between Russia and China. But it's not my business. I mean, I just put them together and run away. I don't make money out of this. And uh, you were talking about the subprimes. I just created a company called Sea Science to visualize science with somebody you should meet. His name is uh, Robert Boner, and um, he produced Cleveland versus Wall Street. And he didn't make a penny out of it. But it's a good movie. So it speaks very nicely about the subject. So to continue on, on, uh, on finance, I was really touched by the way you're, you're saying things very simply. And uh, let me tell you, I looked at all this and I thought, OK, something is wrong. They're hiding the truth for us. But then who can you go against? OK, I don't enter politics. I, I never speak about those things, except when we're alone with some friends, and I can say really what I think, and nobody can put me in jail. So let's go to the next slide, please. Uh, I, I have one. This one works? Yeah. OK. What you see up here are stem cells. You know what stem cells are? Anybody knows what stem cells are? OK. In our body, we have different types of cells. And we have one type of cell that, depending on the environment, and depending on its own program and its own data, will go and make skin, bone, neurons, you name it. It's a fantastic little thing. And not knowing how to start, I thought that I would give you this image, that, this photograph that I asked my wife yesterday evening to do. She said, what are you going to start saying, that I was fighting with you? I said, no, 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 no. This way people will remember something that's very important. You know, my face like this, because I want to say something. Um, nobody's really responsible. You know, when I started looking at this, I thought, how I can come here with my know-how in computer science, in biology, mathematics, and so on, what can we do? I mean, we can't steer this thing. Nobody's responsible. It's a big mess. And what we're doing is exactly what I did to my face yesterday. We're patching. That's it. So our economy looks like me, like this. But not only our economy. Now I come back to my field that I know very, very well. I'm heavy computer scientist. So how many times did you get this kind of message on your computer? A security issue, blah, blah, blah. Uh, upgrade from us. And I changed the names because I don't want anybody to get on my case. And they give you all the list of patches, right? And they tell you, reboot. When I started in computer science, I knew when I pressed this button exactly what was happening, the whole chain on my computer. Okay? Today, even 
heavy computer scientists in the largest company cannot tell you what is going on. So please, when you set the Ten Commandments, it's more than enough. Don't add 11 and 12, because the more you add, the less you know what is going on. And you get this kind of things. And in the same time, it's not because of the fashion. I just took it because you know what's going on with Greece. You're hearing every day. No? This is our economical system. Look what's happening down there. Up there, you need to upgrade. And I just finished with the end. Successive downgrades by rating agencies have so far not affected Athens' program of monthly auction of short-term papers. Wait a minute. Same story. Our economical system, our computers, with what we have added as layers and layers and layers and layers, with a little bit of greed here and there, with uh, wanting to go a little bit faster on, on the computers and a little bit faster on making money, this is the mess we end up with. I would like to go back to my face, but this is about how it looks like. But we need to do something about it. Because if you hear what they're really telling us about Greece, it's a big joke. I mean, it's not a joke for the poor, poor people. They, there is a huge mess that is generated, and what they want? They want the poor little guy to pay his drink a little bit more, his wheat a little bit more, uh, his oil a little bit more. Why? We all know where it's going. And I started le learning a lot of things. You know, there's money offshore, onshore, but even worse, you know, of balance and unbalance. That's a big thing. And then when they send my money from the Polytechnic to my account, nobody sends backs. They just write numbers. And every time you go put this one here, I have a $2 bill that was given to my son when he was born. Can anyone give me the value of this except for my affectionate value because it was given to my son as a good luck thing? I took it just for you today, put it here, it brings me luck. The whole thing becomes complicated, but honestly, it's not so complex. It's a power game, and we don't shoot at each other with weapons, but we use the economy for this. Once you start thinking this way, you say, okay, fine, how can we try to manage it and how, what can we bring to make it happen at the level of every little guy in the street? And believe me, there is enough and it can be done. So the examples you will see, what I'm going to tell you, is really an overall <coughs> view that will go <coughs> from the tools we need, from why I want to create, I need the financial people to help me with this. I don't know how to do it. But we need systems that are as simple and as complex, not complicated, as a stem cell to go and fix things. And we know they're clean. Rules are quite simple, not easy to, to reverse engineer them, but they will go and uh, make a school here when it's needed, and they will go and build this type of plant here and there. Simple systems that really allow us, uh, allows us to stay alive without too much complication. So, this is what I want. And every person who knows me, I run for this, and I hope next year you will have this very close friend of mine, Miguel Nicolilis, who is doing this in the poorest area up in Brazil. I respect him. He's a good scientist. He's bright. Um, he's doing fantastic things to, you know, for a Walk Again project and so on. But Miguel is taking kids from the streets, and he's putting them in the best labs and giving them the best. And he's doing it with what? He is creating industries. He convinced Lula to give him land. He went here and there running himself to get some money. But then he created a center for research on the brain. So I thought, OK, fine. I'm a scientist. I'm a professor. I want to do it. And let's see if I understood something about economy and see if we can do something. So I worked on the neurons. And we need to understand how those babies work. And then when we start touching the neurons, you're in trouble. Just like as the same, same thing as a stem cell. To understand those babies, you need a different way of thinking and a different type of computing. We work on next generation. All this is in my lab. We work on next generation planes. I'm sorry, I did not want to make it uh, exhaustive, but a lot of things on energy. 
okay, uh, intelligent solar cells and so on. But we're working also on different type of transportation that will cut down the price and so on and cut down the energy saving things. And we work on those little babies that are stem cells. Look at this. You have one environment with cells that are doing things. And there's a little one over there, the red one up there. It's called a dormant cell. This is what we need. This little one stays quietly there. And then there's a change of color under there. And this change of color means the environment has changed. And it gets a trigger. When it gets a trigger, it will divide. And it will start doing something for this environment, depending on what is needed. So you don't patch. You just create the proper cells that come and correct the things. I was speaking to my friend Julien. I said, OK, I don't, I mean, I'm Lebanese, but who wants a revolution today? Who wants to just blow the whole thing? Nobody. It's not in the interest of the poor guys, whatever, or us. We don't want it. Fine. Let's try to find a way where you put little things here and there, each one in his field, and little by little, you can change the whole world quietly. And without, yeah, you will be stopped by the big players because it's a power game. But then, you know, research, education, hospitals, arts, it's okay. But this is where the power is. I was educated by the Jesuits. What do they do? They teach you to look at any problem the other way around. They teach you that what you need is schools, universities, hospitals, and media. They print. This is what they did when they came to Lebanon. So I can thank them all my, all my life because I learned this from them. And this is very powerful. Very, very powerful. Can you imagine uh, one of my old professors calling me, asking me anything? I would do it without even asking why. So it's also a power, but a different type of power because it's done mainly for the people. So if we continue, let's just look at what we have in terms of computer science. I will go very quickly on this because I want you to get a hint. This is very heavy. This one hour and 40 minutes um, conference I gave in the Institute of Physics in Moscow. That is not a joke. This is the only thing that I came out with uh, the past four or five years. One of my biggest projects, um, I haven't spoken too much about it. I did a presentation just to check it in the really good place where they can smash you, which is the Physics Institute in Russia. It's the next generation computing called Kika Kinetic Information Computer Architecture. And it's the name of my daughter, too. So we all work with those machines. You have bright people. This guy, Alan Mathison Turing, he was behind the first virtual computer. He's not far from us. We're talking the 30s. His sequential machine and so on. And I keep the slides so if anybody has questions, I can go back to them, but I will not enter it. You have a bright guy, von Neumann. He came out with an architecture for our computers. Fantastic. In, in the 40s, they had rooms about this size. That is 1,000 times less than what I have in my phone. And they, were, they had idealistic thoughts to come and compute and do things. And then you have this great guy, Feynman, a physicist. Had fun, played the bongo in not very, I would say, decent places. So we have plenty of, of things in common. And he was fun. His students loved him and so on. But this guy is one of the heaviest physicists. And I show you his face is because today we need to think the economy. We need to think the next generation computers and so on a little bit differently. We need to look at nature in a closer way to see how it's working. This is why I took the stem cells. But at the same time, to tell you next generation computing, you need a new mathematical model to understand what is going on in order to change things. And you need the next generation computer, which changes completely the actual paradigm of computing. What I'm saying is quite dangerous to me, but I was happy because following your advice and my father, uh, I did a small patent, and it's outside any institution because I wanted free IP, and I want the whole world to work on it. So I don't care. 
They can come catch me and put me tomorrow in jail. It doesn't really matter. It will not change anything. I will publish it. Because it's going to change a lot of things, and it will give tools for financial people. I started understanding. If you have a few seconds on the market today, what can you do? A few milliseconds on the market today. I, okay? So, a lot of things. So, I love this photograph. It's one of my uh, assistants. He took it, and I didn't know that Feynman had a similar one yesterday. I found it on the net. And what you see here in, in the middle is just a synthetic image showing my Tika, this new, new model. So, if we go very quickly, I created uh, a mathematical object, and I will go through very quickly. It's, it's a pity, because those beautiful images, but with light, you can't see them. Anyway, if anybody wants to see them quietly, I can put them on my computer. It's beautiful blue on white. Yeah, that's better. Okay? And I will go through the whole thing, and I will tell you, oops, go back, wait. I can go back, yeah. It's just one thing. Imagine that you take a point, Point has a dimension zero, right? You take this point and you tell this point you are allowed to be a collection of points on a sphere. This is okay. And after that, if you take this sphere and every time you have a sphere, you are allowed to put another one, another one, another one, another one, another one in. The matryoshka. Everybody knows Russians today. They come to us, so matryoshkas. And then you allow them to rotate. And then you allow each point to switch places. OK? And you have connectivity between them. So you go from zero, and you create a universe, because it's n-dimensional and so on. It's a beautiful mathematical object to go and think about it. OK? It can serve the physicists, the mathematicians, the economists, and so on. So it's a beauty. And what really pleased me is a heavy Soviet Union pure product. When I explained the, the system to him, he looked at me and says, it's divine. He says it's divine. It's, it's uh, uh, you know, the, the same weight as um, somebody like Leibniz says that what we do in science is at the image of God, but smaller, a smaller scale. We, we're, not, we're not talking religion. We're talking really fundamental, heavy, uh, serious concepts here. So you take this object, and then I give you applicability. If you go in life science, this type of object you can start touching. I have 2 minutes 42 seconds, I will do it. Not exactly, maybe I'll, I'll steal one minute. Um, you can use it to simulate this. And you can use it to explore complex correlation research. This is what we need to understand what's going on today. Because they have so many patches everywhere, we need something to understand. And in economy, we can go faster than in real time. Why? Because we can be analog and digital. If somebody wants, I can go on the blackboard. And if you want to build it, Kika can be a computer. And this has changed because it went from Macintosh to PC. But this can become purely, if somebody can see here, we can take monoatomic surfaces and build it. And we hit it with light, with particles. So we get an n quantum bit machine. It's a quantum machine. It's digital. And it's analog. This is serious. There is no more difference between data and program. There is no more difference between memory and processing. It's all within the same concept. And this, God knows, I will give it. And let's see if the physicists will build one for me. But it can be done with what we have today. So let's go back to those babies. This is what we want to do in terms of economy. We want them to duplicate, and we want to build them. And Oops, there was a, a big text up there. You know what it says? Because you asked me for a practical down-to-earth project. Kika is a practical down-to-earth project, but I have a great one. You know what was written up there? It was uh, tomatoes for brains. I want to exchange tomatoes for brains. My job is educating. I have kids. I want them to go to school. I want to teach them. I want the school to be private, but I want to give them the money to put in the school. And I want to create an incubator where they go and create ideas, not startups. They are financed there. And later on, I want them to create their own companies. I want to give them back offices. So I need a solution, and I want to look at, for it in the market, in the economy. 
And when I know that when we trade grain, oil, tomatoes, if you control or you're planting the tomatoes, the transport of the tomatoes, the selling of the tomatoes, you can sell them cheaper, make everybody happy and make it three or four hundred percent. That's what the guys are doing. Look at the commodities market. Okay? If you go to the banks, it's okay. They will emit bonds, buy bonds, sell bonds, do whatever you want. They're making money. Why should we make money on the back of the kids? For me, you can do it for anything else. So this is what I'm going to do, and I hope this slide is okay. What I want, what you see up there, you create a university. University can be any type of school. To the right, you have an incubator. You have back offices for them. You cannot ask them to manage. And the key thing is I want to put the financial entity inside. It is there for them, whether it deals with oil, with potatoes, with banks, or it goes to the central bank with a big smile because they have money. And if they go to the central bank, they leverage on the money, right? So if you have a bank in there, it's a bank for all this system. They all put their money in your accounts. You give them the money, they pay university. University has an account, so it's a game. We're doing the same thing as the big guys, but on a small scale. And when they have startups, give the startups money, let them keep their accounts in your bank. And I will not go further because with this, you can make lots of money and you're betting on the brains that are going to come out of this and the emergence of extraordinary projects because the kids don't have to worry of making a startup, signing for it, running after VCs and all this what you said before, this will cut completely all the overhead where we waste time. Thank you very much for your attention. Sorry if I had to go fast. Yeah.